The common housefly, though always uninvited, is one of the most frequent of guests at our dining table and in our kitchen. If all of us realize the fly's filthy habits and how it endangers our health and our lives, we would wage a constant war against it. The common housefly is one of the most deadly spreaders of disease. In order to control or destroy this dangerous pest, we must know the story of its life and its habits. The housefly usually lays its eggs in animal refuse. Here, the heat given off by the decaying and rotting refuse helps to incubate the eggs. The mother fly lays her eggs with this long tube. The white masses below this fly are clusters of eggs. Here you see them highly magnified. About 100 eggs are laid at one time, but each mother fly may lay five batches during her life. Under favorable conditions, these eggs will hatch within 24 hours into slimy larvae which we call maggots. These maggots are wriggling creatures less than a quarter of an inch long. The head is at the pointed end. There is a knob on the head which the maggot uses to pull itself along. The maggots feed and grow in the filth. Their soft, juicy bodies are relished by barnyard chickens who uncover them by scratching. The chickens are unable to find and devour all of them. The maggots dread sunlight, so when they are uncovered, they immediately begin to dig into new hiding places. After about one week, the maggots dig down deeper. Here, the last skin of the maggot shrivels up and becomes the dark brown protective coat of the pupa. This third stage usually lasts about five days unless it is late in the fall. Then it may remain as a pupa through the winter. Near the top of this picture, you see a fly breaking out of the pupa case, aided by its expander. This expander is located on the head of the fly. When the body juices flow into the expander, it swells and breaks open the pupa case. As the fly pushes upward, this expander swells and shrinks a number of times, thus forcing the edges of the pupa case aside. With great effort, the fly fights its way out from this magic chamber. The young fly's struggle to live has just begun. At the bottom of this scene, several flies have just emerged from their pupa cases. At this time, they are a few inches below the surface of the ground. The flies begin to crawl toward the surface. The expander on the front part of the head continues to clear the way. With the aid of its legs, the fly crawls upward toward the open air and freedom. This fly has been taken out of the ground to show you how its expander works. It sometimes happens that the body juices flow into the wings and cause them to expand before the fly reaches the surface. When this happens, the expander ceases to work and the wings anchor the fly in an underground death chamber.
the wings of this fly have not expanded. It crawls up and up and finally reaches the surface. Now, after the fly has emerged, the juices flow out of the expander and into the wings, causing them to unfold. The fly's keen sense of smell guides it to food, often in the kitchen or in the garbage can. We have seen that the house fly has four stages in its life history. It begins with the egg, which is laid in barnyard manure or refuse. Then follows the maggot stage, during which the creature feeds and grows. When full grown, the maggot passes into a resting stage, the pupa. This is followed by the fourth or adult stage of the fly. The head of the housefly is almost covered by two large compound eyes. Each of these consists of hundreds of small eyes. The mouth parts are located below at the end of the long trunk. If the fly is feeding on solid food, it first forces up a liquid from its stomach to dissolve the food. Here is a fly's foot seen through a microscope. Disease germs may collect on the many small hairs. We will let a fly walk across this specially prepared gelatin plate. This view, taken a few days later, shows that the fly's tracks have become thread-like lines which are colonies containing millions of germs. Here you see some of them under a microscope. They are the germs of typhoid fever. Because of their filthy habits, flies may carry such germs to our food. Typhoid and summer diarrhea are nearly always brought by flies. Not only do flies carry germs on their bodies, but since they feed on filth, they take the germs into their stomachs. When a fly visits solid food, such as sugar, and brings up the liquid from its stomach to dissolve the sugar, it leaves the familiar fly spots, which may contain millions of germs. Here are the offspring of a single mother fly, and each one of these female flies in turn will have millions of offspring by autumn. Therefore, it is wise to destroy the early spring flies. Flies may be controlled in homes by means of fly paper, the fly swatter, and screens on windows and doors. But the best way to meet the fly menace is to eliminate all possible places where the flies may breed. Manure heaps, unless sprayed with poisons, should be removed every other day. A huge garbage dump like this is a disgrace to a community. It is not only unsightly, but offers a breeding place for flies. Garbage should be placed in a can with a cover to keep out flies. The garbage should be collected regularly and in a sanitary way. The best modern way to dispose of garbage is to burn it in an incinerator. Thus, if the entire community cooperates, the housefly, carrier of filth and disease, menace to the health of all mankind, can be controlled.